Same result. We talked about it with Robert Guerrero. We talked about it with uh, Devin Alexander. We talked about it with Lamont Peterson. We talked about it with Danny Garcia. We talked about it with Keith Thurman. We talked about it with Lucas Martin Matisse, Matisse, Matisse before. And the question is not, who is Roberto Ortiz, 31-0 and with 24 knockouts? The question is, why is Lucas Martin Matisse, Matisse, or Matisse, 35-3 and with 33 knockouts? Fighting Roberto Ortiz. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I talk about boxing, and it's 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 just like the Lamont Peterson videos I've done recently, just like the Danny Garcia videos I've done recently. You got Adrian Broner on the same card in the same division, fighting Steve. No, no, fighting um fighting Emmanuel Taylor. You got Andre Berto fighting Steve Upshur, and you got, well, even though that's at 147, and you got Lucas Martin, Matisse Matisse, or Matisse fighting Roberto Ortiz at 140. So the question on fans' minds is, well, why not have Broner fight Matisse? But no, that would be too much for Al Heyman and the Heyman stable. That would be too much, wouldn't it? But I've learned to start understanding the politics of boxing a little, a little better. Now, if you look at Matisse's record. If you look at his resume, if you look at the fight with Zeb Judah, right to pass just to Marcus Corley, Chub Chub, you look at Devin Alexander, you look at Lamont Peterson, hell, throw a little Mike Dallas Jr. in there, you know, and then you look at Danny Garcia, and then John Molina is a very credible name. So, you think like, well, he had the fight with Danny Garcia, in which he lost fans, a lot of fans feel that he should have had an immediate rematch even though he lost cleanly to Danny he should have had an immediate rematch because it would have sold but his manager and advisor Al Heyman advises him to fight John Molina even though fans were kind of upset because it was on the same card as Keith Thurman and we know that Lucas Matisse has fought above 140 pounds on multiple occasions but once again that would have been a little too much for the Al Heyman and the Heyman fighters stable so what I'm saying is, once again, it's not about who is, Roberto Ortiz is because it's going to be a good fight. And one thing you've noticed about these fights that we've been somewhat, fans have been upset with. I was going to say, fans have, these fights that fans have been upset with, they've been exciting fights. Devin Alexander, Soto Karras. Rob Guerrero, Yoshihiro Kamagai. And remember, those, both of those fights were on the same card. Um, you look at Keith Thurman versus Julio Diaz. Keith Thurman punched Julio Diaz like right in the stomach and broke his ribs. You look at Lamont, you look at Lucas Matisse versus uh, John Molina, which right now is the fight of the year. Matisse was down twice, cut, you know, it was crazy. So when you look at Lamont Peterson versus Edgar Santana, it wasn't very good to me. When you look at Danny Garcia versus Rod Sockout, one of the craziest knockouts of the year so far. So it's not that these fights have not been exciting. Adrian Broner versus Emmanuel Taylor. Adrian Broner is very charismatic. A lot of fans want to see how Adrian Broner is going to do as far as foot movement is concerned. But then when I think, once again, when I think about like Matisse and Roberto Ortiz, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, why? Like, what does this mean? We already seen that Matisse is somewhat back. I guess, now, now this is just crossing my mind. I guess because he got knocked down twice in his last fight, it was like, oh, now wait a minute. You know, Al Heyman, the advisor, the master advisor said, you got knocked down twice in your last fight. So let's make sure this next fight, we got to make sure you're really, really back. Maybe that's the aspect of where they're going. Or, oh, by the way, I've watched um, several of uh, Roberto Ortiz's fights. You know, they're available on um, YouTube and Daily Motion. And what you'll see is he's a sloppy fighter, but he will provide for a very good fight. Like, his style matches up perfectly with Lucas Martise, uh, Matisse, or Matisse and Matisse. To either lose or win. Now, will this guy and can this guy put Matisse down? Yes. Can he win? Ah, see, when you look at the resume, and that's when the resume matters, and that's when I look at the fact that, well, who is this guy beating? And I can yell out name, but you probably wouldn't even know. So, this fight, I just think that I, I just think that this time they should stop putting these same guys in the same divisions on the same card. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we know, we know Al Heyman has a large majority of the best 140 and 147 pounders 
you might add 154 pounders too. So eventually these guys, these Danny Garcias and these Lamont Peterson and these Adrian Broners and these Lucas Matisse's, you know, and who else, these Keith Thurmans, you know, they're going to have to run into each other. Now, Sam Watson earlier, um, a couple of weeks ago, actually, in an interview, said that he's going, that 2015 is going to be the biggest year in boxing, saying that uh, Mayweather Pacquiao is going to happen, and, you know, maybe Danny Garcia. And I'm thinking that maybe since all this whole thing has been going on with Richard Schaefer and Golden Boy Promotions, maybe things could not go as planned, you know, with, um, with um, Al Heyman and Golden Boy Promotions as far as putting his fighters in tough fights. Maybe he's saving that for when they go into their own promotional company. Now you know remember, Al Heyman cannot man I mean Al Heyman cannot be a promoter. He can only be a manager or advisor, but that's not saying, you know, you can't get Sam Watson or you know use Mayweather promotions. And that's that's a whole different video alone because if this is true, if this like if if maybe Al Heyman is holding off his fighters, like I'm not gonna put you in these big fights under this Golden Boy banner. We're gonna wait until you know, like 2015 and start getting it popping. Now, if that's the case, then are these fighters going to go to Mayweather Promotions? Do you think that, do you think that, I mean, Mayweather's a good name. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be lots of fighters going to one fight under Mayweather Promotions. But do you think a guy like Robert Guerrero, you know, will want to fight under Mayweather Promotions? I'm using that name for a reason. You think he just wanted to be like, well, you know, um, thank you to Mayweather Promotions. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, it's a tough situation to understand, but once again, the whole video is about why he's fighting Roberto Ortiz. Why is just another name that that big that that the um, the core boxing fan group, you know, only we can only we know, you know, how to go research this guy and watch some fights and figure out if he's good or not. But to the fans that are new to the sport, like I'm trying to figure out what is the marketing strategy, like to have these fights on Showtime and just to showcase these guys, you know, knocking out these lower level competition, I, I, I just don't know. Because if that is, that means us as as the, the core fan base, the ones who watch boxing every weekend, you know, and, and buy these sports packages and all that for these boxers, then that means we're losing, right? You know, that means, well, they're trying to get all those subscriptions by putting in, meaning Showtime, they're trying to get all, all those subscriptions by putting those fighters in fights that they can easily win and provide knockouts to people who have Showtime and say, oh, like, for example, what if it's somebody that's just watching Ray Donovan or something? You know, what if it's somebody watching Ray Donovan and the fight, and, um, if somebody's watching Ray Donovan, Ray Donovan and go, Ray Donovan go off, and they, let's say they go do something in the kitchen or whatever, come back boxing his own, and you see his two dudes scrap, and you never watched boxing before a day in your life, and you're like, oh, what is this? Oh, and you see somebody get knocked out, you know, you, you're already becoming, like, a new fan right there, so I'm trying to figure out if that, is that the strategy they're going for you get what i'm saying you know like for for the new people for showtime and showtime's numbers are growing i'm not saying they're ever going to catch hbo you know that's going to take maybe five ten years it's not going to happen overnight but showtime since mayweather has gotten you know a lot golden boy has gotten a big boost so you know that's the whole video i want to sit here and just keep running my mouth on that i'm going to say i'm t street controversy this is t street controversy live i cover boxing what if i feel the need to it's live, unedited, uncut. Please subscribe.